Hey YouTube, did a wee bit of reminiscing today, uh, just lockdown blues sort of thing. Um, I found this in the attic when I was rummaging about finding the EB, uh, my Tele Base 6 for yesterday's video. I thought, ah, so another one in, in the homemade collection. Um, this is a Yamaha Pacifica neck, uh, a warming pickup uh, and Chinese parts and a bit of kitchen worktop that I cut to make a Claymore. Um, this goes back to... One night, me and my pals were sitting drinking Bucky as usual, and Michael's up here. Oh, I heard this song on the radio today. Check this out. Looked up YouTube, "Over the Sea" by Jesse Ray, and it was just—it's one of those videos that I don't know why it was never a big, massive viral hit. It should have been—it should have been a massive um, video, I guess. People maybe didn't get it. I don't know. Um, but the video alone—I mean, I, I do obviously turned into a bit of a mad, mad Jesse Ray fan, bought all his records and stuff. Um, so what we were sitting going like that, this is nuts, it's amazing, and then it was like, oh he's still alive, alright cool, and then he had sort of more modern videos, and he was found him on Facebook, and um, so that night, the, that night or the following weekend, I think after watching a few of his videos, we were like, right, let's get a cover, so we did a cover of Over the Sea, um, me, my pal Michael, my pal Peg, Peg was playing synthesizer, I was playing the 8 string bass, and Michael was playing my electric drum kit, this is my last house, um, since since lost that video because kind of Michael kind of disappeared and uh, he made all his videos private so you can't see them anymore. There is a playlist and it says it's on it but it's not there anymore. Uh, unfortunately, that happened with the, the three or four of the videos I think. Um, a couple of them made it through. Uh, so we did we covered this over the sea song and then thought, wow, well, send it to Jesse and see if he comments and he was like, up here. yeah, very good lads. Okay, so, hey, you got, you know, get some mention for it and then the following week we did another song and then I think the third week. We we're going to do a song called Houdini. We we're doing it up at my house. Um, so this was done by me. So that video still does exist. And um, during the day, I cut out this out of a piece of. I was just messing about with um, the jigsaw and kitchen worktop. And I thought I'm going to make a claymore shaped guitar. So here we go, claymore shaped guitar. Um, see, I, put, I was quite pleased with the output jack on the end there in a kind of circular thing. It's not really that much like a claymore. Kind of looks a bit more like a. Like the the eye the was it the eye of Thundera or something the thunder the Thundercats one uh, single volume control warm and uh, Demarzio type pickup which is a uh, I don't know it's actually spring mounted yeah so it was really just for a for a cheesy video we did for my pals and uh, that night actually we were using it and the paint was still wet on it so you can see us playing it kind of like this and um the way the video worked I found some I don't know was was it in music uh, with uh, Windows movie maker or something like that as a way of kind of having two pictures playing at the same time like so it's like looks like ghosts kind of thing you know what i mean so we ended up doing that and i think we had in like the 16 track set up so we recorded the first take was drums i don't think i, I might have actually been playing drums in it i think i was playing drums for it drums peg was playing bass and mike was playing synth kind of standing in my room and then for the second sort of overdub session, we moved round and uh, uh, I can't remember what we were playing. I need to, I'll, I'll link the video down there anyway. It's, it's a bit silly. It starts off not very good, but by the time it gets to the end, we're kind of getting the hang of it. Um, yeah, so and we, then we ended up, um, after we've done a couple of videos, uh, Jesse's comment was, right, that's when's the gig then? So we ended up doing, I don't know, 10, 20 gigs with, uh, with the man himself. Uh, Never saw his face. He's like he wears like a helmet and a he's got a claymore and a kilt and all battle gear and stuff like that. Proper, you know, it's a lovely guy. Really is um, kind of hard to understand because he comes from. I, mean, I know people maybe think that my Glasgow accent is difficult to understand. He's from the borders, and poof, it's it's hard, especially when he's wearing a, make a makeup, so you can kind of see his mouth, but you can't really see anything else. So you don't really have any facial expressions to guess what he's saying. So you're kind of, he's kind of talking to you, and you're like, yeah. Try, trying to work out in your head what it is he's talking about. Uh, one night he was talking about the Bigfoot all night, and it wasn't until after it was like, what's what it? What's this Bigfoot thing? You know, after he'd gone, it was like, you know, and it was like, worked out, it was a kick drum he was talking about. It's like, yes, it all makes sense. Um, anyway, lovely guy. So I'm going to put a link to this video, which is awesome. I might actually talk about this video. This song is, um, is kind of deep. It's got like a mad camera, uh, helicopter camera shots. On it, and there's a bit where he's actually on top of the Brooklyn Bridge in New York, like him and uh, Bernie Worrell, who is the like the best synth bass player 
ever ever he was in parliament bunker daily kind of all these things i'm actually considering we've talked about power this a couple of months ago and um, once the lockdown's over i'm thinking of going down and actually interviewing him like doing a sort of not a documentary but like a sit down sort of chat show type thing because i some of the stuff he's got is just mental it'd be nice to actually have a proper jesse documentary i mean he did one on um the STV or something like that but it was rubbish well not rubbish but it just it didn't really cover any of the madness for them sitting there going up here yeah so you went on top of the Brooklyn Bridge and it's like how did you get there and it's like you know we just went up a monkey ladder and you're like right so you went up like a rope ladder like I don't know 50 stories or something like that on top of it and, and it's got a helicopter circling them and you're just like Dip. and uh, one of the, his other videos um I'll, I'll put a link to it as well called The Thistle he's got a he's hired a steam train like like a proper flying Scotsman type thing, and um, they're going over, you know, the Glen Glenfiddich Glen Viaduct, the one that's in the Harry Potter films, that's in a James Bond film, like that, right? So he's going over that, sitting on the front, right on the gr the grill of this steam engine, and behind him he's got these flatbed uh, trailers, carriages. They took the sides off, so these are people sitting, and, and he's got his band playing, like I've got a carriage each. So it's like, uh, these are like pure super parliament funky, funkadelic musicians, uh, like Steve Jordan and stuff like that. And uh, they're going over the Glenfiddich Viaduct, which is like in the, the chucking it down rain, it's all misty and all that, helicopter filming them and stuff like that. And uh, they're playing the song. <laughs> like, they, they are actually, I've heard little bits of it actually, they were actually playing it live at the time. Obviously, the, it's not, it's a single, um, it's a studio tape that's on the actual the video but i mean that they were actually playing it and they're just going across the viaduct and it's like in the chuck and rain you can see the you know the water line on these flatbed trucks and there's folk doing there's like the folk doing that highland dancing going over the glenfiddich viaduct with like hundreds of feet drop on either side just mental mental um but this song's pretty good uh this is this was his sort of big hit which never made it i think if this had done well maybe we would know who he was um, i think it got to 60 or something like that in the charts um this is about his wife, who's in the video, and it's about, because uh, he met her at the, she was playing drums in a pipe band, like the big, uh, <laughs> and basically this is what this is about, and it's about, he had to go back to America to record his album, so he wrote this song about Malassi over the sea. So I'm going to try and cover it, I'm going to totally brutalise it, I might just have to give up quite quickly. This is actually my second time trying to do the video, and I'm... Um, and, and we, we used to play it I mean I, I played the bass so there's my excuse for not being very good in the guitar even though Peg did actually use this at gigs I was kind of like are you sure he's like it's a bit high it'd be funny like that. right so I mean, this has been gig 10 or 20 times playing these songs <laughs> So I'm just going to actually just put, stick the video on, sort it. I uh, hope he gets a copyright strike. Ah, you can sort of see it. So there's the man himself. Oh, my God. Oh, 
Going on here, um, this is him flinging the Claymore off from the top of the Oakland Bridge back to the, this lassie over the sea in Scotland. Just uh, um, his son's um, hunting used to help him set up uh, that film, the gig we were doing. Um, we never really told him that we all fancied his mum, to be honest. Uh, that, that, that's the same thing that anyway. Um, And um, actually, the first time we went to um, we had a jam and we went down to St Basil's, which is at the borders, and then um, we're going to rehearse, we're just going to have a rehearse before we did a gig, but the following week we're going to have a rehearsal with them. And then uh, we turned up with bacon rolls, and like, oh, my wife needs you bacon rolls, so it's like, the girl in this video made us bacon rolls. We don't know, but then, there you go. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, I can, could watch that all day. I might stick a couple up. Um, actually, try to subscribe to him on YouTube. I was looking at it and it's actually pretty disgusting that I've actually got more subs than he does. Um, I thought he was at 900 and something, but I think he's only at 700 and something. I was like thinking if he was at 950, I was going to say, right, everyone, if I can get 50 of you to subscribe, it gets you to 1,000. Once you get to 1,000, it changes the algorithm. That's what happened to me. I mean, it took me years to get to 1,000. Once you hit 1,000, suddenly it's like, whoa, you're getting hundreds of views and it must, it must pop up in people's... Um, you know, playlists and suggested items and stuff like that makes a big difference. Um, I suppose I should probably try and have a bit of a jam. So maybe, maybe just try and play some chords from this and then solo over it, maybe. Uh, I kind of, I don't, I don't really want to abuse the song too much. Um,
the strings on this are still goosed in. These must be the original Project Race strings. Um, I remember Pega was complaining about there being kinks under whatever. One of the songs must have been in B and he must have played it really hard because he was forever having to change the E string because he was putting kinks in it. Um, I think that might have actually looked at it, the intonation can't be set quite right. It doesn't look quite right. So I think maybe that was him having to bend that note to make it sound in tune. <laughs> fun, fun, fun. Uh, we used, to, we used to play this and I'm trying to think, maybe we got to the last few gigs we, tried, we did a song where we were all playing synths and I think Peg literally just had this on his back in fact he did because I remember I remember hearing an almighty clatter as this fell off his back because he had a, a key keytar um, actually I, I was playing that one for it and I, I think I'd actually I, I built a, a talking about the Fender 6 I built a Claymore Fender 6 bass which was, it didn't look, I was going to say it didn't look as good as this, how could it not look as good as this, it didn't know. Um, I think I do actually have a video called Sword Guitars that I did, I, there was three, there was one I made for a guy down in, um, a noise artist down in Newcastle, and at that time I still had the bass and this, um, so I'll maybe put a, a link to Sword Guitars in the corner, there I can do it, I can't remember. Um, yes! Uh, but the, the Fender bass, the bass I made had like a, a curtain pole that screwed into the back of it to make it like a a Claymore. Um, actually, just get, uh, Jesse wanted to buy it off me. Like right after we'd finished the band, and I didn't see him a couple of times. Um, I actually ended up doing one gig with him and a band called Brass Eye in Glasgow. They were a, they were a, a, a brass band. You know, like they were all kind of mad looking, uh, pink hair and all that. And all, they all wore a, like a gold Brass Eye T-shirt and had like a is it a sousaphone? big massive trombone things and trumpets and all these things and I, I played bass so I'd like I, I played and it was just so it was me playing bass uh, and then like a 13 piece brass band and Jesse singing um, yeah it was it was interesting <laughs> never did another one um, but it, it worked it was, it was good fun um, and then Jesse's like ah, can I buy the, the, the Claymore bass off you and it was like pure no so I just gave it to him um, so he, that's now in Sid Bozzles uh, actually I should really try and maybe ask him for a photo of him playing it like as a Mad Malco Guitars promo poster type thing. I'm sure you would do that. That may be good. I'll get him to do that next time it's a nice day. I'll get him to stand out the back with, with my Claymore bass uh, and then I'll put like a Mad Malco lo logo on it and stick it in the Blitzkrieg shop. Sorted. Yeah, okay. Plan, plan, plan. Uh, need to talk to him anyway. I haven't talked to him for a while. Um, but I quite like the idea of doing the documentary thing I mean, it is, it's, it's quite a long drive and stuff like that but you know I just went down with, a, you know, with this camera and a mic and I just kind of sat in the rugby club and then just basically asked him questions because I mean some of the stories are just nuts um, I mean how do you do some of the things he did how do you hire a steam train and a helicopter um, I should probably actually there's a few, few shots in this as well um, pure bumped by, heli by uh, the film Highlander so there he is there that's, that's the top of the Brooklyn Bridge um, like with a helicopter spinning around him. But uh, a lot of the shots from this video are blatantly used in the film Highlander. It's the same uh, camera crew and all that. Also Braveheart, pure bump this to bits like that. That is a shot from Braveheart. I just suppose Lord of the Rings when you look at it now. Um, uh, um, no, I mean, just some, some of them, the mad, the madness and how he ended up with the band and being sort of in Parliament with Uncadelic. Just for me, he, he met Bernie Worrell in a lift and gave him a tape. And I think Bernie's one of those folk that got a sense of humour and Jesse can be really funny. So I think, um, you know, he's in the blackest area of uh, Dayton, is it, in America? And he's like, he's like, he's just a white Scottish guy. And he's just like, everyone's like, what? It's like, they're like me when I was in China. And I was just like, what? I think you're probably wearing a kilt as well. <laughs> it's just like, no, uh, yeah, madness. So if you can, sub to him, try and get him up to up to a thousand subs. I think he doesn't really put enough on it. The, all, all his videos are on it. There's an awful lot of um, sort of behind the scenes footage and wee snippets videos. So I think I might I might try and find his like top six and make a wee playlist of the sort of, you know, the, the actually proper released and done videos like this. Um, there's, there's at least, there's at least six that are pure fantastic videos um, even if you don't particularly like the music I for me I, I just thought it was really weird I didn't really hear it as funk I never really understood what funk was even when I was in the band it wasn't until after 
I'd left or something. I'd go, all oh, right, I, I can understand it now. You know, playing on the one and stuff like that. I, I knew what funk was, but I didn't feel the funk until after I'd been in the band. It was like, which was really annoying, seeing as I was the bass player. So really, I should have been the funky one. Um, I was just playing what I thought was right. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna give go the, give this back to Peg. I actually, I get I gave this to Peg at the end of the band. I was like, well, it's yours, obviously, and um, and then I, I borrowed it back off him because I was going to see Wilco Johnson, who is um, from he was in Doctor Feelgood, uh, but he was also Sir Ellen Payne in Game of Thrones, the executioner who kills Sean Bean at the end of the first season. Spoilers. Uh, so I took this. I was going to see him at the ABC in Glasgow, which unfortunately isn't there anymore. It burnt down the best venue in Glasgow and the best thing about that place was there was no back door so every band had to come out the front door so after the gig you get a kebab stand out the front for half an hour and then the bands would come out to get to their tour buses and stuff like that so I kind of we accosted him and I got him to cut my head off sort of, sort of in pain style with this sword um, I, I, how did I get it into the gig actually I wanted to put it in the cloakroom I was like up here can I, I bought this I brought my guitar in just so I can get a uh, you know, welcome to sign it, and the guy behind the desk was just like that. Here, you're not putting that in the cloakroom here, and they, you know, he just asked for Tam at the end, sort of thing. <laughs> it was like, uh, he just he gave it back to me. So I was standing playing this, I think, kind of wee bat the amp, playing this outside. You know, after my kebab before Welker came out, got him to cut my head off with it. <laughs> ah. So, rock on. Hope this is just. I know this is just a bit of a jibber jabber. Um, video but after this if you could watch some check out some of these i'll stick out at least four of the best ones in the link down there and um they're they're brilliant especially if you've got a wee bit of a drink in you <laughs> rock on catch you later